Welcome to Devlog 4. My name is Jason, game designer and environment artist on Hunters Uprising. Of course, as always, anything you see here is very much early work in progress and subject to change as we progress. We've had a pretty busy month with our game, implementing a basic gameplay loop, making a trailer for an indie expo, and creating our Steam page for the community to wishlist, which, by the way, is out now. And with that said, first up I will show you the basic gameplay loop. We can enter the save zone from the main menu featuring our main menu music created by Bubson, or go straight into the extraction zone. For this demonstration I will load straight into the extraction zone, grab some loot and extract safely, and in the interest of time I will make some cuts here and there. As I head towards the end of our current gameplay loop, you notice these red flares which indicate the extraction points. This is how we escape the zone and head back to the safe zone. Once within range, you'll be presented with a 30 second timer to add tension. This was designed and created by our sound engineer, Avi. Once back to the safe zone with your loot, you can also store said loot in the stash, which will save for the next time you play. Of course, this is all our first iteration of the gameplay loop for test purposes, so things will most likely change slightly over time. Our game engineers have also been working hard on improving our inventory system that uses Jigsaw, making it more our own. Of course, as a small indie team we use assets from the marketplace, which we've always been transparent about, but where we can, we do customise everything to fit our vision. And for those familiar with DayZ, we can loot from vicinity, place items to use in our pockets assigned to a number key, and loot different containers. All of this is saved and comes with you if you successfully extract. If you die in the zone, you lose everything. One of our new usable loot items, soon to be a craftable, is food and drink, which we can place into the previously mentioned pocket quick slots and use when needed. Personally, I think these sound awesome, and the audio was made by our sound engineer, Dean. One very important area we have been focusing on is optimization. We noticed a lot of our blueprints were constantly ticking when they shouldn't. Disabling this for thousands of these in our world gave us a massive boost to performance and stability. We also noticed one particular asset destroying our performance, so we replaced this with all new PCG roads I mentioned in a previous devlog for a much smoother result. That said, we still have a lot of work to do in this regard, but we will keep you posted as always. Next up we have some more first iterations for our project, which are very much work in progress. Starting with our shotguns, the pump action is probably the closest to being finished, but I need to tidy up some animations for the semi-auto and double barrel, as you can see. We also have our first sniper rifle in, which again needs a lot of animation work. Of course, we could always just leave it like this. And here is our crossbow in our test level, which we were hoping to debut in our trailer, but sadly it didn't make the cut. So here it is in its early stages, with one of the many struggles of early game development. Something small that our engineer Danny added was the lower weapon key. Not really useful, but you can look cool walking the streets of the zone before getting shot.
Our early horse riding mechanic is in. It's not perfect, but gives you an idea of what we're aiming for. We would like players to have multiple choice through progression regarding traversal of the safe zone. For instance, you start with a horse and later maybe unlock a car. We are, however, still in discussion about whether we use horses in the extraction zone itself. It could be fun, but also it could break the gameplay loop. So please do let us know your thoughts on this in the comment section below. I've been busy playing with the AI navigation to use dynamic invokers, which in theory should offer a more random AI pathing. Given enough time, the AI could end up anywhere on the map. We're hoping this will help randomize AI a bit more than the default navigation method. Our deer seemed lonely, so as you do, I programmed a doe to keep him company. She's still in very early stages, but she should get hungry and tired, and if you shoot in her direction, she will attempt to run away. Meanwhile, Rabbit has been busy building a new location to the extraction map, the train yard. This spooky location has lots of overgrowth and will have an old, rusty industrial ambience and might just become one of my favorite locations. Some older locations have had some love, mainly making some loot locations for the new items and inventory system so we can test things out. Putting our eyes in the point of view of a player is tough, but designing these areas with the playstyles in mind is really needed to make things balanced. From cover to hide behind to counter locations, we need to calculate all possible outcomes and eliminate what seems unfair. Of course, this is a long-term process and will change more over our playtest sessions. Over the last month, there is a lot more that's been tweaked under the hood by our engineers, but that kind of gives you the gist of what we've been going for the last couple of weeks. So that is all for Devlog number four. Of course, feel free to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below or join our game's Discord for more discussions or ideas you may have. We are extremely transparent and take on all feedback, good or bad. Links can be found in the description. Don't forget to hit that like button and share the video to help get our project known. Oh, and wishlist on Steam. But most of all, thank you for watching, and I'll see you peeps next time.